<laughs> my name is Mike Minguchi, and this is my ghost story. I was in the Marine Corps, and I was working security at the American Embassy in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, in uh, 1969 or 70. This particular occasion, I was working at the ambassador's residence, which is a huge old mansion that had been a coffee plantation. And it was one of those kind of places that wasn't really spooky, but it was very elaborate, really a big place. And uh, I was working in a small office that we had, where we would basically fill out log books and security things. And uh, I was armed. And there was always another Marine sleeping or resting at the same time. There were always two Marines in the residence. So I was there writing in a log book, and I heard one of my friends shouting my name. So I ran down the hall, obviously with my, pulled my revolver, ran down the hall, and I stopped in the doorway, and my friend was sitting up in bed, and the bed was just shaking, not vibrating, shaking back and forth. And the first thing I did was I touched the walls to see if anything else was shaking, but I thought maybe there was an earthquake or traffic or something. There was nothing going on, only the bed was shaking. So I told him to get out of the bed. He jumped out of the bed, was still shaking. I threw the uh, mattress and the, the bed clothes and everything off of the, the bed, continued shaking, and then it stopped. Now this lasted, I guess, maybe 45 seconds at the most. Uh, but it was very scary, and I, to this day, I have no idea what happened. My name is Cindy Smiley. I'm from Kokomo, Indiana, and this is my ghost story. I was 12 years old. My parents were out of town in Chicago visiting my brother. I decided I'll go home on Saturday, clean my room, and I took four girls with me. It was during the middle of the day. I got the sweeper out, did a lot of work, turned it off, went downstairs. We're all downstairs talking. We hear the sweeper go on. Everybody just looks at each other. We're just, ah! So we go up the stairs and the sweeper's running. I turn it off and the girl goes, oh my gosh, this house is so spooky. Great big brick house. She said, the weird thing was when we looked in that cold room and that doll was laying there with its eyes open. So we go into that room, the doll is standing in the corner. We're all screaming, ah! So we decide to leave, we ran down the stairs I said, turn off all the lights because I don't want my mom to freak out that I had friends over. And I can't get the door shut. Somebody comes up to help me and the door pushes us. I lock it with a skeleton key and we go around the block. Our house stuck out further than the other houses and we all look down at the house and the lights are on. So we come right around the block again. We get up to the sidewalk and our steps and we're all going oh I don't want to go in there lights go out and so the next day on Sunday we go over there we're upstairs and we hear opera singing no one says anything everybody just speechless and we all start running down the stairs and we run out the door and there's my mom and dad at the curb so I was upstairs, I had these games in my hand, my girlfriend's dad was going to come pick them up. Felt like something just pulled them out of my hands. The light goes off and I hear music box music. So I run down the stairs and my dad's in the living room. I said, Dad, did you turn the light off on me? And he went, no. And I said, the light went off and I heard music box music. He barely even looks away from his paper. My mom comes down and says, I was in the bedroom right by the door where I was at and I heard Cindy scream, but I did hear music box music. So, I don't know, I never want to experience it again. I feel kind of weird talking about it. Um, I don't envy anybody that lives in a haunted house. I slept with my light on for the rest of high school. That's my story. Hi, this is Farley Compton, and uh, I'm gonna tell you my ghost story. Uh, in the early 70s, my brother Vic and I were in a band called Bonita Shortline, and we used to uh, rent an old warehouse space in Manhattan, Kansas. And uh, after living there for a while, uh, during some of the rehearsals, uh, we would notice uh, someone in the band's face would kind of uh, look surprised, and their jaw would kind of drop once in a while. And, and finally, somebody admitted that 
uh, occasionally during practices, sometimes uh, some of the band members who were just sitting around the table eating or reading the newspaper at night would look over. There was at the uh, restroom at the back of the warehouse space, there was just an open doorway, no door, and you would see what appeared to be a figure of a person in a black coat and black pressed pants. You'd see the bottom two-thirds of his back and, and rear end walking into the bathroom. And um, by the time we'd been there for several months, uh, I think everyone in the band had seen this happen. And then the band moved out, we went to California for a while, and then uh, uh, after things didn't work out there, we moved back and leased the space again. And uh, a couple of new members of the band uh, had also started seeing the same figure uh, walk into the bathroom. And uh, it would, of course, uh, freak everyone out, and we'd exchange stories about it. it, it um, certain points everybody at one time or another saw this figure and we're not sure what the explanation would be but we could be playing loud rock and roll in the middle of the day nobody was high nobody was drunk and just uh, one person would just notice it and the other guys would look and see why there was an interruption in the song and you could tell that oh you saw it again they go yeah yeah we saw it again later on I uh, met an old man who had worked in that storefront years before it was a small ice cream shop and uh, sold dairy products ice cream and, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we were seeing somebody from the old, uh, old ice cream shop from 30, 40, 50 years before, but it was definitely something that would uh, raise the hair on the back of your neck. <laughs>